systems thinking is a way of seeing the world. Uh, and um, one of the fathers of systems thinking is a guy called Churchman. And he said, systems thinking begins when you first see the world through the eyes of another. So if you're going to see the world through the eyes of another, then it helps if you have some awareness of how you see the world. So the first question we're asking ourselves is, how do I see the world? So what I want to ask you straight away is, what are you paying attention to at the moment? The answer to that is probably fairly obvious, given where you're all looking. Um, but perhaps more significantly, what are you not paying attention to? What are all the things that you could be paying attention to in here that you are somehow blocking out and not seeing because what you are paying attention to is this chap who's standing at the front asking you what you're paying attention to. So somehow or other, you are in the process right now of making a selection of what you want to pay attention to. And you're using some process within yourself for making that selection. So something about the way we are in here is making you add meaning to the fact that you're looking at me and you're making a connection with what I'm saying. I'm making a reference here to something called Chris Argaris's Ladder of Inference, and uh, you might like to have a look at that. So having selected out, using whatever it is you, you do to make that selection, you then add meaning. So the meaning that you're probably adding is some, will be something to do with language because you're hearing me speak and you're able to interpret language because you have a language interpreting method inside you. And so you sitting there listening to me, you start to assume that it's worth your while to carry on listening to me in some way because I seem to be making some sort of sense or I'm saying something that's sufficiently interesting for you to assume it's, it's of value. So you then conclude, yes, that this, is, this is in some way of value. Um, I'm finding this useful. And going on from your conclusion, you think to yourself, on the basis of that, I, I believe in, in what's being said here. Uh, it fits with my other beliefs that I already hold about, for instance, how classrooms work or how we are when we're learning from somebody who purports to be expert and we're listening to that person. So you're fitting what's happening here into a pre-existing set of assumptions and beliefs. And as a result of that, that ladder of inference that you've just gone through, you act on your belief. And the way that you're acting on your belief at the moment is by not actually acting, you're sitting still listening. You could have come to the opposite conclusion. You could have thought, well, actually, this chap's talking. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm already totally bored. Um, I'm going to get up and go. And that would be acting on your belief that what you're hearing doesn't, doesn't serve you in some way. So what tends to happen is we all the time pay attention to something, don't pay attention to other things, focus in on what it is, assume, conclude, and then our beliefs, uh, the beliefs that we probably already hold, are largely corroborated by what happens. So it feeds back into, so you now continue to sit here listening to me. So you're into a sort of positive feedback loop where you carry on sitting, you carry on listening, you hear me, you believe in what I'm saying, it reaffirms your existing beliefs, it fits with what you already understand about the world, and so you continue to act in the same way. So this filter that we have, this worldview filter, is incredibly powerful. Um, and without it, it would be incredibly difficult. If we if we'd wanted to change our belief sets every quarter of an hour or 20 minutes or something, uh, life would become impossible. So, of course, it makes absolute sense to have a set of beliefs, set of assumptions, set of values, set of things that you find important. But what tends to happen is that we don't hold an awareness that we have those assumptions and beliefs and that they are there acting for us and with us all the time and shaping 
our actions and reaffirming our beliefs, al allowing us to pay attention to things that seem to fit, not pay attention to things that don't fit. A, a very good question in this, in this regard is, who do you not see? You know, I'm not saying you do, this is true for you, but do you see the cleaner? Um, do, you, do you notice the person that takes your credit card when you go into the petrol station? I'm not saying you should, but it's just interesting that there are some people that you don't even see because they're not really doing enough. Their profile doesn't come up enough in front of us to make them worthy of attention because our worldview is saying, oh, I don't need to pay attention. There's a human being there, but I don't really need to pay attention to that particular human being because they're doing something which is sort of very processy and I don't need to engage. Do, do you see what I mean? So the way in which our worldview operates is a very powerful effector of the way in which we act in the world. I start at this point because all I'm asking you to do is to develop, if you haven't already got that, you may already have done so, is to develop some sort of awareness of how you act in the world. A really good way of developing that awareness is to get hold of an artifact of some kind, um, something that has meaning for you, and sometime or other introduce yourself to somebody using this artifact. So an example I use is a bunch of keys. So a bunch of keys is an artifact. I use it because it happens that I would love us to live in a world where we didn't need keys. Keys to me represent what is wrong with the world, if you like. Um, you know, and they're very medieval, aren't they? They're, they're always kind of big metal clunky things. Why we haven't gone technological with keys, I can't imagine. Maybe deliberately because they mean something to us but I would like to live in a world with no keys. So there's an illustration straight away. You know something about me. I've used an artifact to illustrate myself. You've got a sense of my worldview. It's only a glimpse, but do you see what I mean? So it's something that you might find useful to do is to get an artifact sometime and say, oh, what does this say about me? If I was going to use this, how might I introduce myself to somebody? What does it say about my assumptions, my beliefs, my values, what I find important? And those words, assumptions, beliefs, values, are what make up your view of the world and influence how you, how you act in the world. So this is where we start with this systems thinking journey, is to say, how do I see the world? What is, what is my set of assumptions, beliefs, and values? And then to go out into the world and notice, not judge, not tell yourself off about it, but just notice how the way that you see the world affects how you act in the world and the ways in which your worldview influences and the way that you use your worldview to decide what you're going to pay attention to and also to decide what you're not going to pay attention to. One of the first exercises I suggest at this stage um, of the system thinking course is to go out into the world and very often when we have a, a worldview, we like to push it at people. I'm as guilty of this as anybody. So if you have a strong feeling that you really know something or you really believe in something, you push it at people. You do what's called advocate. And I don't know if any of you have found this, especially around environmental and sustainability issues, the more you advocate, the more other people back up and get defensive and start arguing with you and stop listening to you. And this is what's, what's happening there is two worldviews are clashing with each other. They've got their worldview, you've got yours, and you're basically trying to bash them against each other, and they tend just to bounce off. So a very useful exercise is to do something different, and I'm borrowing here from somebody called Torbert, uh, is to go out into the world and do what's called framing, illustrating, and inquiring. What does that mean? Well, framing is, first of all, setting a bit of a context for what it is you're about to say or do. So, for example, if you're used to advocating, 
and you decide you're going to change your way of being, as an experiment, doesn't mean one is more right than the other, you're just going to try it out to see what happens. We talk a lot about experiment in systems thinking. So you, you go into a meeting where your people expect you to be an advocate because that's how you usually are. And you think, well, I'm going to play this meeting differently. I'm going to try framing, illustrating, and inquiring. So first of all, the framing bit is to tell everybody that you're going to try something different today and why you are and what it is about it. I'm not saying you have to do this. This is just an example. So you tell people, I've decided, I've listened to myself in these meetings and I can tell I mostly bang the table and I try and impose my worldview on you, so I'm going to try something different today. I'm going to really properly listen to you. And in order to demonstrate to you what I mean, I'm going to illustrate this by telling a story. So yesterday I was in a meeting and I noticed somebody there who wasn't really putting forward their point of view at all, other than to ask us very curious very interested, very genuine questions about what we meant and about how we knew what we knew. And he said, I, I found this really interesting, that they were coming across the table saying, I, can you just explain that for me a bit more? I don't quite fully understand what you mean there. And, and how do you know that? Wh wh where are you getting your information from? And I found this line of questioning very engaging, and I could tell that this person was genuinely wanting to learn from me. So that's what I'd like to do today in this meeting. I'm going to do some inquiring instead of banging the table and getting you to believe what I believe. So this is just an experiment I suggest that you might like to do in relation to your worldview. Because what it does is, as you go into framing, illustrating and inquiring, you have to let go of your need to superimpose your view on others. And what that then makes you aware of is what your view is. Because when you're listening to other people giving you their view, you're matching up your own against it and seeing what reaction happens in here. You think, oh, I don't agree with that. I must argue with that. And then you're thinking, no, I'm not going to argue. I'm going to ask a question about it. I'm going to be inquiring instead. So I'm, it's just an experiment. You might decide at the end of it you're going to go back to advocating. It serves you really well, and that's what you're going to do.